All right, back here inside the TCO studios, Gabe Henderson here alongside Ben Lieber, former Vikings linebacker. We see him all the time. And Ben, today we are going to break down the top linebackers in the 2021 NFL Draft. I'm not going to talk as much as you, but I know you like a guy on this list. His name is Michael Parsons. So I'm just going to have you give his description <laughs> and I'm going to just stay out of this. White swallowed, swarmed by Mr. Everywhere. Micah Parsons. Come the pitch. Parsons caused the fumble. Micah Parsons said, I'll see you when I see you. Well, let me just say that every one of these guys we're going to talk about are already better than I ever was. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a lot of respect for all these guys, and I hope they can all be first rounders. But, you know, I, I think Micah Parsons to me. Um, really pretty much is head and shoulders above everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's because he has this, this background from high school where he was more of a, he was more of a blitzer. Um, when they picked him up at Penn State, they knew that they had this raw athleticism that could just ferociously come off the edge, get after the quarterback. They had to sort of refine his linebacking skills mm -hmm. and, and that has really come along. So he hasn't, he hasn't left and haven't, hasn't left behind that tenacity to get downhill, to break through the line of scrimmage, to get after the quarterback. And I think that's the first thing that you see is when he makes a decision to go downhill and, and whether it's the ball is handed off or the play action and the quarterback's going to hold on the ball, he's attacking right. and he attacks with this uh, almost like a safety-like athleticism and movement. Um, I don't think that he's going to be there at 14, but but nonetheless, I mean, he's a super talented guy, and I can't wait to watch him in the league. So Mel Kuyper has Micah Parsons uh, being selected ninth overall to the to the Broncos, and Todd McShay has the Eagles trading up to the 12th spot for Micah Parsons. But before we move to the next person, when you see a guy like Micah Parsons, 6'3", 245, plays the game the right way for the linebacker position, mm -hmm. do, do you think a guy like him is helping evolve the linebacker position at all or no? You know, a little bit, you know, he's, it's kind of a rarity that I feel like in this modern NFL, we're finding guys that are specialized in that one position. You know, you're finding cornerbacks that only play the slot. You're finding edge guys that are only getting after the passer on third downs and sub packages. Uh, conversely, you're finding defensive ends that are only first and second down guys and linebackers who are more sub package guys. And, you know, guys like Parsons to me really aren't, they're not trendsetters, they're just playing old school football. You know, he's a, he's a three down guy that you don't have to sub in and out on sub packages, that he can stop the run, he can do all those things that you want him to do on first and second down. And then on third down, he can still play in space. Mm -hmm. He can still cover some guys. So, no, I actually think that, I actually think we, I wish we saw more guys like this, mm -hmm. where you don't have to specialize, and they aren't these hybrid slash players. He's just, he's just a dude, man. He's a linebacker that loves mm -hmm. to play ball. The next dude on our list is Jeremiah Owusu Koromua. Lost one up for grabs and he's intercepted by Jeremiah Owusu Koromua. This is a special player. Great defense. Landers is swarmed under by the Notre Dame defense. Owusu Koromua. When you turn the film on, mm -hmm. he's everywhere. When yeah. you look at his film, what stands out to you? <laughs> he brings the pain, man. <laughs> <laughs> he brings the pain. Uh, you know, he's not a super big guy. Um, the thing that I think you, you like about him is uh, he's tenacious. You know, there are times where he's playing, he's the fastest guy in the field. And I'm not talking just on defense. I'm mm -hmm. saying, you know, the offense included. You know, he's, he's the most explosive guy that you see in a short area. He, he gets to the point of impact with explosion. And also he, he sort of moves a little bit like a defensive back. You know, you can see him out covering a guy in the slot. You can see him out covering a, a guy all the way at number one. And he seems comfortable like that. Um, I think in the run game sometimes he, he can struggle a little bit against some of the bigger guys and that's just, you know, being you know, 215 pounds. Yeah. He just doesn't bring a lot when he's going against a 300 pounder. But when you look at a guy that's going to run around in space and make some noise, mm -hmm. this guy. A Buckets Award winner, uh, ACC Defensive Player of the Year. The guy has accolades. And it, if you look at, you know, the draft boards, I know we keep talking about mock drafts, this and yeah. that. None of it really matters until the team selects the guy. But a lot of people have him projected to the 14th spot. We all know we have the pick, yeah. at, well, the 14th overall pick. We already have Anthony Barr. We already have Eric Kendricks. So if he falls, do you trade back? Like, if he, if he falls to the 14th spot, do you trade back and use that as leverage? Or, like, what are you thinking? Well, again, I think because there's so much emphasis and free agency on the defensive side of the ball for the Vikings that, you know, you're, 
you're going to be in a spot where are there absolute needs at 14? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Are you going to feel compelled to maybe go after guys talented as him? Absolutely. But I think it all depends on where the offensive linemen are, where the offensive tackles are. Um, it'd be hard to look at him um, and trade back um, only if you knew that you can get an offensive lineman yeah. or only if you knew that like all those guys were taken and you could maybe trade back mm -hmm. and get him. It's possible. I just don't see at 14 that you'd pull the trigger on a guy like this. Well, we know there's going to be a lot of linebackers available on day two and day three. And Nick Bolton from Missouri is a guy that's going to be available. And he's a guy that can play. In the backfield, who else? Nick Bolton, the tackling machine. And Nick Bolton was right there reading the play to knock it down. Blockers ahead, but a great open field tackle. There he is. There he is again, Nick Bolton. Yeah, he's absolutely a guy that can play. I mean, much, I mean, sort of like Kentrell Brothers already. You know, obviously the same school, easy to make the comparison. Um, I think they had the same nose for the foot football. Um, I think they, they play with the same instincts. Um, they're great tacklers. I, I think Nick Bolton maybe is a little bit better in space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where he sets himself aside from Kentrell Brothers. But, you know, absolutely a guy that if, if you were to, if the Vikings were to pick up a second round pick somewhere mm -hmm. and and Nick Bolton is there you you absolutely have to start considering that position because as you as you laid out we have two starting linebackers but the whole reason we're doing this exercise right now is because we don't know what's going to happen in the future you don't Very know what's going to happen with Anthony Barr's situation we already saw what's going to happen if we lose a guy to injury mm -hmm. for a significant amount of time you know, how much depth do you have? You know, a second round selection on a future starter mm. is not a bad way to go. What about Dylan Moses from, from Alabama? Running for his life and he can't get away from Dylan Moses. Beautiful play by Dylan Moses. He's a guy that has played meaningful snaps, mm -hmm. but he's been a little injury prone. So yeah. that, that kind of push him, pushes him down the board. Yeah, you know, a lot of people look at his, his tape last year and his stats last year and say like, well, you know, it was okay. It was good. You know, we, we maybe didn't, we saw regression a little bit in some of, um, some of his movements and, you know, comes out after the season, he played with a torn meniscus. Mm -hmm. um, can't imagine how painful and, and uncomfortable that was. So you got to give him credit for playing through the pain, understanding that he wants to be out there for his teammates. You know, what I like about him is he's versatile. You know, in his years at Alabama, he played every position. He can play Mike, he can play the outside. I think that he's more suited more for the outside spot. I don't think that he's a, a true A to B gap type of player going downhill. I think he really can make some plays as he's running sideline to sideline, running those alleys, playing out more in space, not having to take on uh, those big offensive linemen all the time. But when you look at just the sheer athleticism and, and like, is this guy a football player? Dylan Moses absolutely is. What about Cameron McGrone? We haven't seen him play much. He went to Michigan. Now a lot of experts are saying this guy is going to be a, a starter for, for years to come. Under pressure again, he's sacked again. Cameron McGrone. It was McGrone again. Nice play by Cameron McGrone. The more you see a 44, the more you love him. You know, the fun thing about, about watching Michigan's defense this year is like, you know, I went to go watch Quiddy Pay, mm -hmm. and it happens a lot of times. You'll go to watch one player, then there's another player like, oh, who's, who's that? <laughs> Holy crap, who's that guy? Like, yeah. who's that guy running? I mean, if you want to find like a, a Quiddy Pay comparison when it comes to energy level mm -hmm. on the second level, it's Cameron McGrone. And, and so that immediately I saw this, this ball of energy that never stopped. But the thing that really stood out to me was he understood past concepts. And what I mean by that, he knew how to get through the trash. Mm -hmm. He, If he had a back coming out of the backfield, but he also saw a compressed, uh, reduced receiver set, he put himself in a position not to get picked. You know, it's like, it's those little things. He took the good angles to where he still stayed in coverage, even though he had to fight through some of the trash. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's saying a lot for a college player. So you can already see he's well coached and he understands how to take all that coaching and practice from practice into the games. And so I see a cerebral player that is um, that flies around and gives a ton of energy and is, was ultra productive in the Big Ten. Ultra productive in the Big Ten. Ultra productive takes from you today, and I appreciate your time today. That will wrap it up for our linebacker position. We will see you guys next time, and we're going to talk about the defensive back position.